Hey guys, this is Vernier for Cardinals.com, bringing you a Building the Bankroll 2014 series. So the first episode is going to focus on under-the-gun play, but in general, this series is going to entail how to make money in 2014 uh, playing the 6 max micro and small stakes. So a little bit about the series. So it's based on 6 max no limit hold'em. Uh, all the hands that I'm going to use as, uh, as examples, uh, all the actual hands, are played on stars and uh, full tilt poker. Uh, this was um, my hands from Canada uh, from last year, but I'm going to pick and choose um, what I think are uh, applicable examples to uh, today's games. So there's going to be quite a bit of theory discussion. It's really important to understand not just the what, but the why on... Um, why you should do certain things and why should you should not uh, do uh, other things. So understanding both of those things is going to help you generalize to situations in which there's no uh, cookie cutter approach. So it's really important to, first of all, understand what ABC poker is at uh, kind of the lower stakes. And then taking that to the next level, it's it's really also important to understand when to deviate from it. So for example, in general, we're not going to be opening king 10 offsuit under the gun, but there are situations in which you, in which you should open king 10 offsuit under the gun. So you want to know, you want to know, you want to understand when to make exceptions from the general rules, um, because that's definitely going to make you a lot of money. Lots of real examples from 50 no limit and 100 no limit. Uh, like I said, from uh, stars and full tilt poker. And hopefully by the end of this series, you should have a complete model of solid play, uh, which means you should have a, you know, you should know what to do in about 80% of situations. I think a lot of play is relatively straightforward at the micro and small stakes. And uh, the hands that you see posted on the forums are, uh, a lot of them are really, really marginal hands in which th- there's there's really no like, clear answer and what to do in a lot of situations. Um, so after the series, I'm hoping that you'll know what to do like, you know, 90% of the time. Uh, and you're going to be able to make correct plays. So since this episode is going to focus on under the gun play, let's look at a couple of facts about under the gun play and their implications. So first of all, you're going to face a three bet around 20% of the time. It's going to be less at uh, the very micro stakes, and then it goes up as uh, as you move up. So I think around 100, uh, around 100 no limit, you're going to be uh, three bet like 18, 20 percent of the time. Obviously, at like two no limit, it's 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 going to be much lower than that. You're also perceived to have your strongest raising range. Most players play relatively tight from under the gun. And uh, you should as well. And we'll talk about, you know, which hands to open and why you should open them in a second. Um, but the the solid regulars know that you're going to have a strong raising range. So the implication of these two uh, facts means that your four bets, this is the situation in which your four bets get the most respect. Um, so th- that's going to be important when we construct our ranges and talk about um, how we, we want to respond to aggression when we face a three bet. So another fact about under the gun play is you're going to be out of position post flop most of the time, and most of the time you're going to be in a heads up pot. So um, that means that you need hands that you can double barrel. Now that's either for value or because you pick up turn equity. Um, so as you construct your range, you're going to have to construct it um, with uh, with this in mind. You need hands that you're going to be able to uh, continue with strongly on the turn.